This is a story of survival, the incredible story of how a six-year-old Jewish boy survived the Nazis' final solution and kept how he survived a secret for more than 50 years. It's the story of Alex Kurzem, who at the age of six watched his family being shot by the Nazis. He escaped and wandered alone for months until he was captured by Nazi soldiers. But instead of killing him, they made him their mascot. That's right, Jewish boy mascot for the Nazis. Alex was so young, he quickly forgot his family name, his age, and the name of his village. But he did remember that the Nazis had fenced the Jews into a ghetto. And on his last night there, Nazi soldiers burst into his house and began beating his mother. I remember when she shielded me that her blood dripping. I felt my face and there was blood on my head, but it was my mother's blood. You were hiding? Under the skirt, sort of, you know, with three of us. Uh, I had a little brother and sister, and we were, she was shielding us, sort of. She could shield them from the soldiers' blows, but not their bullets. And she told Alex that the next day they would all be shot. That night, my mother took me in her arms, and she said, tomorrow we'll have to die. And I thought to myself, I don't want to die. I'll have to try to escape. So that night, crawling through the grass, he snuck past Nazi soldiers and up to the top of a hill and hid in a forest overlooking the village. And when the daylight broke, I heard a lot of commotion and noise below. When I looked down, I saw soldiers lining up people and shooting them in a big, big pit. And then I saw my mother is my brother and sister also led. You saw your mother and your brother and your sister? Yeah, all being led to the pit. I, I hate to ask you this, but did you see your mother being shot? Yes, I saw them all lined up. And, and you still see it today? Yeah, that's very visible in my head all the time. Village records say the Nazis massacred more than 1,600 people there on October 21st, 1941. And Nazi records show that a Nazi battalion took Alex in on July 12, 1942. The months in between are a mystery. Alex says all he remembers is wandering alone, cold and hungry, in the forest. He took a winter coat off a dead soldier to keep from freezing to death. And he slept in empty sheds and in trees by tying himself to branches. Why did you decide to sleep in trees? I heard wolves in the distance. And I knew that if the wolves find me asleep on the ground, they would eat me, most likely. So I, I got scared of that. So the only way to survive, climb a tree. He begged for food at farmhouses until one day he knocked on the wrong door. The man said to me, Ah, oh, you're a Jew, you shouldn't be alive. You should be dead with others. I'll take you to be shot. And he took you to be shot, He didn't took he? me, dragged me to the schoolyard where they were lining up people and shooting them. And uh, the soldier who was nearby me, I said to him, please, before you kill me, would you give me a bit of bread? All I was thinking, I'm hungry. Wish I could get a bit of bread before I die. The soldier... Yeah. who gave you bread, yeah. he then took you into around the school, into, into the, the schoolhouse school, and, and he said he wanted to see if you're Jewish. That's right. So and he made you lower your pants. That's it. And he saw you were Jewish. Jew and he said, no good, no good, no good. That's all he kept saying. No good, no good, no good. I understand that he put a pistol to his own head That's to right. show you what was going to happen so to you. If, you. if they find out you're Jewish. But, but then he says, that soldier took pity on the little boy. He not only gave Alex bread, he gave him his life. told me, he said, what I'll do, I'll tell the other soldiers that you're a Russian orphan. The soldiers gave me a new name and a new birthday. And so that's how I became the mask or the good luck charm for this particular division. Once the soldier convinced his unit to make Alex a Nazi, he got his own tailor-made SS uniforms, his own miniature gun, and his own rank, corporal the youngest corporal in the Nazi army. Then, all decked out, this little Jewish boy marched off with his Nazi division. They went off to kill Jews. I sometimes come into a village where we've been patrolling and you see people being lined up to be shot in groups. Then you come to another place 
and you see 20 or 30 people lined up to be hanged. When you saw people being shot like that, did it bring back memories of your mother? Yes, I, I turned my head away many a time because I thought, well, you could have been one of them and that's what happened in the place you lived to you, all your family. Later in the war, when the Russians counterattacked and the fighting became too intense for him to stay with the soldiers, the Nazis gave Alex a new family, placing him with a prominent Nazi family in Riga, Latvia. During the summers when he was seven and eight years old, Alex and his Latvian foster family spent their weekends at a beach near Riga. One weekend, the Germans made a propaganda film right here starring Alex, the youngest corporal in the Nazi army, a role model for the master race, a role model who the Germans didn't realize was Jewish. Did you feel funny because here were the Nazis making a film about you and you were Jewish, which exactly. they didn't know about? All the time I felt something wrong somewhere. <laughs> How am I a star when I'm on the, you know, on the hated race? <laughs> he lived in fear every day, he said, that the soldiers and later his foster family would discover he was Jewish. I had to be aware every moment. Doesn't matter where I was, beach, bedroom, bathroom, every moment I had to think that I'm here under false pretenses. If I'm discovered, I'm gone. What did it feel like living under false pretenses 24 hours a day? Well, very stressful, very, very stressful. What do you think would have happened if they had discovered that you were Jewish? Oh, I think there wouldn't, was no doubt that I would have been shot. No doubt. After the war, he migrated to Australia, married and had his own family. But he still kept his secrets and didn't tell his wife or his children that he'd spent the war with the Nazis or that he was Jewish. He kept those secrets for more than 50 years before he felt compelled to answer the questions that had haunted him since the war. I thought before I die, I should know who I am. And also, I always wished to go back to the village and put a flower on my, my mother's grave. But this wouldn't be easy. Orphaned at age six, he remembered the trauma, but had long forgotten his true identity. He didn't know his name, or his birth date, or the name of his village, or where it might be. The only clue he had to anything was one word that had stuck in his mind for all those years. One word, Koydenov, but he had no idea what it meant. Koydenov, yeah. I thought for a while it could be my surname or something, but that's what I remembered, Koydenov. His son Mark made a documentary of the quest for his father's history. They searched for months in dictionaries, encyclopedias, and atlases until a historian finally discovered that Koydenov had been the previous name of a town in Belorussia outside Minsk. With that breakthrough, he then found a half-brother he didn't know existed. <laughs> and when he returned to Koydenov, this right, this right. he found his old house, which was still standing, Apple tree. And an apple tree he used to climb. This is it. It clicks everything I told him. This clicks now. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. You couldn't believe it? Couldn't believe it, no. And then your name, you found out your name? Yeah, we found that my name was Ilya Solomonovich Kalperin. His half-brother gave him a picture of their father, who had died 20 years earlier. The similarity to Alex is striking. Alex thought his father had been killed during the war, but he'd really been taken to a concentration camp and survived. When his father returned to his village, he heard that his wife and all his children, including Alex, had been killed. So father and son had each thought the other was dead. I would have liked to meet him, you know, after he came back from the concentration camps and tell him that he had a son who survived the war. But it didn't turn out that way. Yeah. In Koydenov, Alex fulfilled his other lifelong wish. He placed flowers at his mother's grave on a memorial to the 1,600 Jews killed here by the Nazis in 1941. It was my family and everybody, all my relatives, uh, which were quite a large number, I suppose, you know, everybody. Alex took us up the hill where he'd hidden behind trees that are gone now. As he'd watched his mother and hundreds of others being killed below, he told us he bit his hand to keep from screaming and that he passed out several times. From the sights and from the screams and from the pain in me, 
the shooting went all day, all day. And uh, I knew that I couldn't do nothing about it, but it wasn't very nice to watch either, you know. So I had a glimpse and then I turned my head and cried. And, he used to and, feel guilty that he survived, but now he feels relieved that he's able to tell his story. The Jewish Claims Conference has verified it, and his son wrote a book about it. Still, the past is not a happy place for Alex, but he went there and came back, having found his name, his village, and his mother's grave. But... Did you ever find out what your birthday is? No, I never found out, but uh, every morning I get up, I wish myself a happy birthday, and one day I'll strike it lucky. <laughs> so... I hope you get a gift every day. Uh, not a gift, a gift that I can see the sun. A gift that you can see the sun. Yeah.